Welcome to the Web Basics. Well, this time, this is not a review. This time, it's about a technique. Here we have the, the arm sling. Well, actually, I call it arm sling. A few years ago, uh, a friend told me, Robbie, please give this technique another name. Arm sling sounds like a broken arm or something. So you can call it Singapore sling or Tennessee sling or Robbie sling, whatever you like. Well, before we start with the details on the technique, one word about safety. This sling is, especially for the beginner, very dangerous for your eyes because the, th the sling, the whip, will travel right up here, the side of your face. And so, safety goggles. I heard people saying, ah, safety goggles are for losers. Well, then I am a loser. But this thing, it protects your eyes. So it would be really good. I highly recommend, highly recommend to wear those safety goggles. Okay, good. And on to the technique. The whole thing looks like this. All the action is right up here on your arm. And the problem is the whip and the insects, gee, the whip, the whip comes up here. It passes here, right between the whip's handle and your face. It comes up here and then it wraps a second time around your arm and it comes up again. So you know why, okay? So the whole thing. Once more. Up. You wrap, you turn the handle and you can go on with the technique. Of course you can start the whole thing just up and wrap it around like this. You can do it here, like that. Or you can have a sling before that, like this, a wind, like this. And crack, okay? Well, that's your personal preference, whatever you like to do. But again, the whip comes up here, between the handle, your arm, and your face. And you know, especially when you start, it's not guaranteed that the whip will always come exactly up like this. It can very easily come up like that. Okay. Good. To the whips. Um, the shorter the whip, the faster the whole sling will be. Sure. You can do this with a five foot whip, you can do it with a four footer, you can do it with an eight footer, you can do it with a six or a seven footer, whatever you like. The problem is when the whip is too long, like I said, for example, a ten footer, it may be a problem because the whip will go over the floor here and this will, this will slow down the whole action. And then you could end in something like, yep, like this and you don't have enough speed because that's what you need here. You need speed. Okay, that's very important. I'll show you the whole thing with another whip, like this. Same thing, you bring it up around the arm and bump the crack. Okay, this is a seven foot whip and you see it's quite nice, it's speedy, it's dramatic. And like I said, for a show, for a performance, I think it's better to do it a little bit slower so that the audience can see what you're doing, okay? You bring the whip up, you wrap it here around your arm, and at the same moment, you continue that motion with the handle, and then you go down into the crack, or just bring the whip down, whatever you like. Like this. And that's it. Okay, once more, the whip is straightened out behind you, you bring it up, you wrap it around your arm, you follow with the handle and bam, the crack. But you can bring it just down once more, a little bit more from that angle here, bring it up, 
and okay or you can go directly into that sling or you can have a wind before that or you can have a crack before you go into the sling whatever okay just the whole thing you bring the whip up this time without a wind before it like this and down with a wind before the sling like this wind and here okay so that's the whole thing um, what's important on the whole technique of course there are potential well traps number one when you bring the handle up especially in the beginning some people tend to hold the handle out there like this and the whip will go over there that's wrong technique but it's not dangerous you know you go up like this and you think oh uh, yeah it's it's a little bit like you like the coachman's crack where you come up like this you know but here you have to bring it up here and here is the next trap you come you can right step into when you bring the handle up instead of having it like this if you have it a little bit like that I do it very slow because I don't like to hit myself if we bring it up to in a, like this if you come up here you will you can end like this something like that and this is not good okay that's not only wrong it is extremely dangerous so better bring your handle out there too far than bring it too far in here okay the whole thing properly looks like this and you go bam. wrong way number one like this which is harmless wrong way number two which is dangerous something like ah oh yeah you, know, you see the cracker was coming right up here right up here now and that was not planned that was just because I did it the wrong way okay so um, perhaps when you say with the coachman's crack where you have a similar beginning like this this is the coachman's crack when you master the coachman's crack just bring the whip a little bit over here and then you have it around your arm here okay so okay so much for the technique for the arm sling like I call it Tennessee sling Robbie sling Singapore sling whatever you like I'm pretty sure there are hundreds of names for the technique but before we come to the end I'd like to say a few words about masters teachers and performers um, out there in the internet well there are great performers no doubt about that but there is one performer I like best because his shows are entertaining they're really great his tricks are amazing his precision is wow and his name is Chris Kemp Christopher Kemp the whip guy if you like check check YouTube check the internet for Christopher Kemp Chris Kemp or the whip guy you'll love his shows um, and teachers you know the difference is this you have people on YouTube who call themselves whip master well I call myself ground school teacher when it comes to whip cracking but that's another story you have people describing themselves as whip master and then you have people who just do the videos and teach well her name is Restida de Jesus She's from the Seattle Snapdragons, the Bullwhip Enthusiast Group. And if you like, do yourself the favor and check YouTube for her videos. Restita de Jesus, the Seattle Snapdragons. And, well, I, I said there are two performers, uh, two teachers, sorry. The other one is Darren Wilkerson. Darren is also a great teacher. I really love his explanations. He breaks things also down into parts. He has he has really good technique, he explains very relaxed and very relaxed way. And so, um, just Darren Wilkerson on YouTube. 
he and Restita de Jesus are, well, as far as I'm concerned, really, really great teachers, especially for the beginners. And I think they have also great ideas for the advanced. So if you like, just check YouTube for Restita de Jesus, the Seattle Snapdragons, and Darren Wilkerson, also a great teacher. Before we stop now, before we really finish the whole thing, please let me remind you again on these ones. This technique can be really dangerous for your eyes because the whip comes up here, right up here, right here at your face. So please do me the favor and wear those safety goggles, okay? They may look funny, they may look stupid, whatever, but they protect your eyes. So wear them, okay? Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and take care. Bye-bye.